<laughs> this is yeah we're gonna keep this in <laughs> this is uh, welcome to our third episode of fireside cinema uh that we haven't uploaded yet but once we get one more we're gonna upload five a week at a time and all that jazz i'm brian and this is marianne and uh today we're gonna do our first round table and this is going to probably be our format from here on out we got uh, everybody introduce yourselves i'm sam so <laughs> aaron's not saying anything I, I i'm aaron or or better known on the interwebs as hudson frohawk <laughs> uh yeah so i am daniel uh you can follow me on twitter at blonde sequitur which is actually my Twitter handle, believe it or not. Um, and I'm 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 uh, I'm a movie geek, probably worse than Brian. Uh, a billion years ago, I used to read scripts for a living, and uh, I don't know what the hell happened in between. <laughs> <laughs> you wound up at American Express in Phoenix. Yeah, but I wound up talking to people on the phone for a living. Who knew? So <laughs> I I have to warn you guys, Daniel, uh, Daniel, Dan, and I are masters of the segue, so we might be talking about. <laughs> one thing and then we'll go completely into something totally different no, and it'll take us an hour to get back that. to the initial the initial topics so. isn't that what i'm here for it sounds like a podcast yeah <laughs> <laughs> yes what they do they're true that's what marianne is here for she's uh to keep us on track so marianne what do we have going on today <laughs> so it's been uh, about a week since the oscars so why not do an oscars rundown Yay! Ooh, yeah. Yay. So, first question, pretty broad. What did you all think of the venue and the different format this year? I, I personally loved the Sundance Awards this year. They had a bigger budget than ever. <laughs> it, it did seem a lot That's cleaner. What we're about, right? Yeah, Sundance. I, I mean, it, it struck me as being a lot cleaner. Now, I will also admit, I did not watch the entire thing all the way through. I would watch it for about 15, 20 minutes at a shot. Mm -hmm. And then I realized exactly what he's saying, that it struck me, boy, I'd really rather watch the independent film awards. Do you know what I <laughs> yeah. mean? Because the jokes yeah. are better. <laughs> and, yeah. I, and so I would stop watching it for 20, 30 minutes and come back. Uh, yeah, so I, I think you're right. I think there was an attempt to modernize it and, and streamline it but it somehow stripped all the humanity out of it. To me, anyway. It didn't, it didn't feel like the Oscars. Like, I yeah. want, you know, I, I like, yeah, like, it, it It was like two steps forward, three steps back. Yeah, mm -hmm. kind of. Well, yeah, rough, like, it, it, yeah. the show has needed an update for a long time. And mm -hmm. this has kind of forced it to do that. But I don't know if all the choices they made were, you know. I didn't like the order. No, that was the order. Um, I was very confused. Like I, I saw your your status. Everyone's like, "Do we miss Best Actor and Actress?" We paused it. Yeah, we paused like, it. We're gonna we rewind. This up? Yeah, I mean, completely backfired on them. Uh, yeah. saying that, the one thing that totally backfired, and I agree with this point. The Best Actor award saved for last. I don't think that the producers of the show and the Academy were on the same page. Obviously, mm -hmm. I think they set it up for a Chadwick Boseman win. Yeah, like, yeah. This was definitely. going to be like, and then there was going to be some massive Absolutely. tribute that they had planned for Chadwick Boseman, uh, because the Best Picture winner is always last, and it should be last. But saving the best, always, yeah, winner, yeah. And then all of a sudden, it's like Anthony Hopkins, and it sort of diminished Anthony Hopkins win too, because it was a damn good performance in The Father. Yeah. In fact, everybody yeah. in that category gave great performances, but I think yeah. they were setting it up for some sort of Chadwick Boseman win, and it just totally backfired, and it was rather anticlimactic. Yeah, and then they just were like, okay, good night. Yeah. <laughs> He's not here, sorry. Yeah, yeah so, I mean, they're known for like setting up potential moments, because they don't know who's going to win, you know? Yeah. Right. Right. Sometimes it works, like when you have Coppola and Lucas and Spielberg there to give Scorsese award, but they didn't know Scorsese was win. They just thought, hey, this would be cool if he did. Yeah. Or like when they had Harrison Ford give best director to Polanski. They they set up potential moments, and sometimes it leads to really great anticlimactic endings yeah. that pisses off Twitter. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So it goes both ways. 
but I remember when uh, I told Dan, I walked up to him, I, I walked up to your desk and said, Dan, they just announced Scorsese, Spielberg, and Coppola are announcing a Best Director Award. And he goes, Scorsese won. But I still didn't think Scorsese was going to win because the Academy yeah. loves Clint Eastwood. You know, I love yeah. Eastwood too, but you know, don't get me a but. You know, they he already won for Million Dollar Baby. Uh, and Marianne knows my opinion on that film. Uh, <laughs> when 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 Scorsese wins Best Director for Departed. Yeah, and they all leave the stage. Yeah, who's last? There, there's George Darian, Lucas. He's George last. Lucas it's like last Coppola and, and Spielberg he, got their arms around uh, Scorsese, and like uh, Lucas is the odd man out. No, what it was was I'm cool. I'm worth four billion dollars. You guys go ahead and enjoy all the awards. <laughs> I, like okay. I've never, I've never seen a guy go. I'm worth more than everybody in this joint added together. I'm cool. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, like that. That moment sort of blew me away in, in a variety of different angles. Because Scorsese wins for a remake of a film that I thought was superior. If you've never seen Infernal Affairs, yeah, go watch Infernal Affairs. It is yeah. what The Departed was based on. It is brilliant. It is yeah. tremendous, and it has a totally different ending that is far superior. So I think Scorsese understood all of that, and when he won, I think he like he even walks up to, to get the award and he shrugs, right? He like looks at his friend and he goes, "Hey, look at this!" You know, like <laughs> I get it. Like, like like he almost felt like he was cheating the Academy. I'm, I did a remake. I did a reboot, right? And I won for that. This is what you award me for? It's like, you know, it's like almost like he's shocked by it, right? And yeah. so yeah, I feel like when even we, even when he made that movie, I feel like he knew, like, I'm just going to make a fun gangster movie. Exactly. Like, yeah. like Aviator, exactly. he put all his chips into Aviator and Gangs of New York and was like, one of these will win me it. And he was like, I'll make this fun, you know, remake with Leo and this will be fun. And then yeah. they're like, oh, hey, let's give it to him for this one. This makes <laughs> yeah. sense. He should have. He should have got for the Aviator. I am so sorry. Yeah. He should have got. I mean, they gave it to Eastwood. I love Eastwood, but I'm sorry. Million Dollar Baby is an overrated film. Well, I thought, like, he should have yeah. got it for Raging Bull, but yeah. you know. Well, right. yeah. But I will. But. I will admit, Ordinary People is a is is a pretty good movie as well. But he should have got it for Raging Bull because that one has aged better than Ordinary People. We, we should have given it to him for Wolf of Wall Street. Just really screwed with everybody's heads. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, all right. So, so back to the, the overall uh, presentation. I, I didn't like the mix-up of the order. I think that mm -hmm. has value. Thing for it was reverence of film. Do you know what I mean? Like film okay. as the shining city on the hill. And I felt like that failed because, again, the humanity of the event was stripped away from it. Right? Yeah. It, we couldn't laugh at ourselves. So when you can't laugh at yourself or laugh at your industry, or laugh at the things that you do, I, I felt like that pulled away from it. Do you know what I mean? It felt a little bit uh, lifeless to me. I don't know how you guys felt. Yeah. I, yeah. yeah it, felt, it felt already so serious. You know, this is our big night in cinema. It always helped to have somebody like Steve Martin be like, we're also kind of douchebags, guys. Yeah, Remember? Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so Bonnie Hunt used to do this party at her house like two weeks before the Oscars. And she would invite all the comedy writers she knew, and they would write the jokes people would say during the Oscars. And, and people talk about that, like, event as like, oh, my God, if you can get into that room and hang out with those people. And it was like Steve Martin was there and Martin Short is there and uh, Billy Crystal is there and Eddie Murphy would drop in. It would be just wow. like every funny comedy writer in L.A. would come to her house for dinner and just crank out jokes. And I remember saying, somebody should film that. Oh my God, somebody sneak in a camera somewhere because the, the running gags that must come out of that room, right? So I think, when was Moonlight, Brian? 2018? It came out in 2016. The Oscars were 2017. Yeah. That was the year they had the mix up yeah. where everybody from La La Land got on stage. La La Land. Right, 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 right. So that was the year that um, Bonnie stopped hosting the party. Like they're like, no, we got to be serious. Don't don't do that anymore. And so she uh, hasn't hosted one of those parties for about four or five years now. And I really feel like it's like, no, we're going to be serious about movies, man. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna talk about all the great things we do. 
it, and, and sadly, it almost reminds me of the jokes that people make about the Oscars, like the, the two guys who do South Park when they did the Film Actors Guild. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Talking about, we're gonna we're gonna bring peace to the world. You know what I mean? And it's just like, oh yeah, God, yeah. Come on, laugh at yourselves, right? Yeah. You, you have to have you know nobody. I, I was I was waiting for a joke about Bob Odenkirk in Nobody. Didn't see one, right? The guy from Better Call Saul is now a joke. Yeah. No, no, no jokes about that. No <laughs> jokes about Trump losing, right? And and by yeah, the there way, was no like political anything. Yeah, like right. yeah. There were I a mean, couple I, in speeches, you know, but there wasn't yeah, but a major attack. Right. Right. But but yeah, it's it very much surprised me how I guess I'm gonna go with dry. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it felt yeah. really dry. I, I didn't. I, I couldn't think of the word until right now. But yeah, very dry, very yeah. you know mm -hmm. lifeless. So yeah. I don't know. But again, I don't know. Why I, I, like Glenn think Close. Why I kept tuning away myself. So you know. in life, right? yeah. yeah, Glenn Close with her butt. Yeah, <laughs> I actually like that. But now everybody's telling me that it was a scripted moment. You know. Well, it totally was. Oh yeah. 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 Uh, okay. Well, then I take back what I said. She won the night. <laughs> yeah. you know, Let's forget it. Make you forget sad it. Too, yeah. <laughs> and it's super, for God's sake, she figure if anybody's going to spice it up, it's going to be him. You Who? know what I mean? Soderbergh, Who? right? He's the he's the producer in the yeah. background of all. This. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I I like the like the film opening titles the way they did it with um, yes, cool. with the that Virginia cool. walking. But you know, um, I will say I and maybe I'm in a minority here. I did not miss the musical performances. I guess I didn't either. I guess I get sick of them every year, you know, and they always get uh, the latest choreographer i guess i got tired of them back at the 89 well technically 1990 but it was the 89 oscars when paula abdul choreographed everything uh that year no actually <laughs> the previous year when alan carr produced <laughs> anybody remember that one where rob just Owens, on youtube ryan <laughs> what just on yeah, youtube that's, yeah that's old man like I mean, Rob Lowe, I don't remember that. Rob Lowe and, and Snow cool. White doing uh, Proud Mary. <laughs> what? Yes. Rolling <laughs> on the river. Yes. <laughs> it, it was, you, you have to look it up. Uh, you got to look it up. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Now but, that, is a, that is a reference from the vault, my friend. Yes. You are going deep. I am going, going deep. deep. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I kind of got sick of them. Or Debbie Allen is a great choreographer, but I remember when uh, they, they, they did dance pieces to uh, best score at the um, 98 Oscars, aired in yeah. 99. Mm -hmm. And Savion Glover was tap dancing to to the theme to saving private uh um right, yeah saving private saving private Ryan, Ryan. Yeah, i'm like that. okay why is he tap dancing to this um it's <laughs> not matching with the music i mean you watch that movie you can't help but just tap your feet you know, you know, you know, you know, you know, right were they what? literally tap dancing around the subject <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if they were, you almost want to give them credit for it. Like, oh my God, that's halfway creative, you know. Yeah. But anyway, so so did we did we cover the topic? I want to make sure I don't want to. That's. I know my segue sometimes, so I, I apologize. <laughs> I do too, but I, t I tend to talk a lot, so I'm trying not to talk. Marianne has another well, word. Well, we, we like the music before because, like, we sh we watched the pre-show when they did the music. Yeah, they, I like that better. Yeah, when well, yeah. they did it beforehand. Yeah, like yeah, that's like that yeah. way. Like you watched them if you wanted to watch them, and then the shows, the show, and it let the actors or or the you know the artists when they won, they they had their speeches and weren't rushed like previous years. Yeah, so that was nice. Yeah, I like, yeah, yeah, I, I, I like that. Yeah, I like that they weren't rushed off. Yeah. They were able to say what they wanted to. Mm -hmm. um, um, I think Marianne was going to go and bring this up, but what I didn't, yeah. what I didn't like, and I just maybe some people did, but I didn't like the presenters you know, gushing over the nominees. I thought that was it started to get overdone. You know, like yeah, your performance when I saw it was just so impeccably crafted and uh, <laughs> when you did that head turn. It was just the, the, the head turn to end all head turns, you know, it's just so 
but nobody said they sucked. Right? What? No, nobody came out and said, oh, my God, Hopkins, you sucked in the father. That's terrible. Right. <laughs> you know, I mean, no one's going to do that, right? So, yeah, I mean. And did we notice that more because it was a drier show? Like, would that have been as noticeable if there was more jokes poking fun at our, you know, H-Rain. we're going to make fun of ourselves, too, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That's a good I don't think it would have been. That's a good point. I don't think it would have been as noticeable if they did it. Yeah. Um, I mean, some of it sounded scripted too, like uh, when they were talking. Some of it didn't. Some of it did. Yeah. It makes, well, makes me wonder if there was a writer's room, right? Instead of Bonnie Hunt with the joke guys, where, where there are like half a dozen, you know, documentary filmmakers. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they had half a dozen lawyers looking up Wikipedia. Did you know that he was a popcorn artist before he was a film artist? We should bring that up. <laughs> <laughs> Here's another one. So Errol Morris, you guys remember Errol Morris, how he used to do the in in Oscar, um, I, I don't know what's called, they were like interviews with people, right? And he did one, I don't know, five, six years ago, and he was interviewing people about their favorite movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and they're like, what chicks? I remember that. Right, right. Well, Errol Morris is all about the headshots, right? Like he would, that's where he wants his camera. He wants it right up in, in the interviewee's faces. Um, and they didn't have that either, because that's always kind of a cute little let's strip the 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 veneer off of this and let's bring the heart back right yeah. what do people really feel about movies what do people really feel about uh what hollywood gives us that wasn't there either right so. yeah period there when scorsese was like editing and putting together the you know tributes for right 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 um I, I remember the um, Elia Kazan one, which was you know, designed for everybody to stand up and give him a. It was, it was designed for everybody to give him a standing ovation and forget and about half the of them did. Half of them yeah. did, yeah. Spielberg, he sat and applauded. Uh, Nick Nolte and Ed Harris were just like, nope. <laughs> mm-hmm. so, uh, but I mean, the, the the music swelled at the end of it. Bomb, bomb. Big still photo of, of Elia Kazan and. Uh, it's like stand up now. <laughs> so. but, but it, I mean, I, I literally remember. I think it was like the left side of the auditorium stood up, and the yeah. right side. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it, was. it was pretty much like half and half. <laughs> yeah, right. And it's like, imagine being the director of that. Stay on the left. Stay on the left. Stay on the left. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so, Marianne, um, what's the next topic about the Oscars? Sure. So I think uh, Dan might have brought this up beforehand, not during this uh, call or anything, but um, an interesting topic is um, Brad Pitt as a producer now. Is he like the hottest producer in Hollywood now or what? Because in the last 10 years, these are the movies he's produced that have been nominated for Best Picture. Minari, um, not okay, not for Best Picture, but Ad Astra was nominated for some Oscars. Vice, If Beale Street Could Talk, um, Moonlight, Big Short, Selma, Twelve Years a Slave, Moneyball, and The Tree of Life, and that's just since 2011. So, what what's going on here? <laughs> he was a producer on The Departed too. We brought that up earlier. Yeah, and Brad Pitt, if you guys don't know this, is a closet fan of an author named Michael Lewis. Uh, I think uh, Marianne, you mentioned it was Moneyball was yep. one of the first ones, right? Mm-hmm. And The Big Short. Both of yep. those are books by Michael Lewis, and you know, I, I've always joked that if I could ask Brad Pitt one question, I would say, how much of a fanboy are you of Michael Lewis? Because I know you are, right? I just know it. And and uh, so you could almost see the evolution of somebody like Brad Pitt going, I'm going to move towards scripts that just interest me, no matter what the topic material is, right? If it's, if it's that character from Moneyball, I want to make that movie. If it's the characters in Moonlight or the characters in Minari, Think of all those different movies. They're all interesting people, but it's Mm -hmm. totally fish out of water stories, right? Minari, they're in, Mm -hmm. what is it, Arkansas? Is it Arkansas? Yes. Yeah, Yeah. where they're filming. Um, Moonlight, a black gay man. Seriously, a black gay man. I mean, like that's like a subculture of a subculture, right? I mean, so many interesting, bizarre, but they're all fish out of water. They all Mm -hmm. fit that same archetype. And you can almost see Brad Pitt kind of going through that saying, why wouldn't somebody want to see this as long as it's well executed? It's an interesting story, as long as it's well executed. So what he did was to make sure that as the producer, I'm going to get the right people behind the camera. I'm going to get the right people to do the lighting and the, you know, cinematography and everything. So he really did nitpick all of those 
other things because he realized the story is interesting enough to stand on its own, as long as I get all the right people in the background doing it. That's what I think has been fascinating about Brad Pitt becoming a producer, right? Yeah. The, the story is almost the last thing that he's worried about as long as it's interesting. <laughs> and I wanted to know what you guys thought, but I wanted to know what you guys thought about that. Like, is that like, do you gravitate towards movies where, boy, this is interesting. I'm going to go see it, even though I might not understand what it's like to be uh, a black gay man or a farmer in Arkansas who is from a different country or whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. You kind of look at it and go, this is interesting. I'm going to go see mm -hmm. it. Well, yeah, you did kind of take the words out of my mouth with that whole thing there, but uh, uh, you, you really did. But no, I, yeah, I mean, um, at the end of the day, you have to have characters that you care about, you know, yeah. mm -hmm. no matter who it is. Um, a Korean family coming to America and making their home in Arkansas or a bunch of superheroes trying to cope with their first loss, you know. It's uh, you, you have to have interesting characters at the end of the day. Um, right back to Marvel, folks. Not like someone that. shitting in a bucket in a van. What the hell was yeah. that? <laughs> Nomad Land. Yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> I have to watch it now. Are you serious? They well, have you seen any uh, have you seen any Instagram pictures of like Arizona sunsets, Brian? Yeah. Where people are like, oh, it's Arizona sun. You've seen Nomad Land. Yeah. Yes. No, that's it's just that. I felt I felt nothing. Like all these movies you're bringing up, like Moonlight. I'm like, this movie is great. Like, yeah. you know, I I cried with him. Like, you know, like that's what I want to watch. I want to watch a yes. film that I feel something. Nomadland. Yes. I'm like, oh, it's Frances McDormand playing herself. That's <laughs> cool. It was She's great. It was, like, yeah, so, I, I, like she I'm deserves her other Oscars, yeah. and there's other films. Yeah, that she's three been billboards, fantastic great. in Fargo, great. This, I'm like, you know what, three billboards is awesome. Yeah, three yeah. billboards is awesome. And the scenes between her and Rockwell, I want to cut them out and put them on a loop <laughs> and just say, yeah, yeah. That's how you act. Yeah. Well, he's great. You great actor, be Rockwell. You want to be a great actress, be Francis. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, I, I love her. Like I, I've loved her since like I saw Mississippi Burning way back when, and yeah. I was like, this chick is really, really rad. So I'm not ripping her. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know. You I know. totally get where you're coming from. Yeah, but it, I, I mentioned this to Brian as we were starting this. It, it feels funny to me that I, I joke that when you think about sports, <clears throat> and and you take basketball as an example, all of the great basketball players are now no longer from this country. They come from Europe or they come from China, right, or wherever. Yeah. They come here, and they're phenomenons. And I joke with Brian, I'm like, great, now all the great directors are going to come from other countries, because what do we do? We, I mean, when's the last time we inspired a, a James Cameron? When's the last time we inspired a, a John Carpenter? When's the last time we inspired any American director to make multiple movies? Now, Tarantino might be the last um, of, that, the, of that group. I don't know. I'll I mean... I'll say Paul Thomas Anderson and Christopher Nolan. Well, Paul Thomas Anderson more than anything. I mean, um, yeah, no. Well, but Nolan did split his time in America and Britain, so he's kind of an odd, like growing up. Yeah, you know, yeah. So it's kind of an odd thing. Yeah, but, but you're thinking about homegrown talent, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's like um, when Boogie Nights came out. I didn't see Hard Eight or you know Sydney. If you're a fan of. Paul Thomas Anderson, which is the uh, right title, but uh, I just heard all the reviews, and all you have to do is tell me that it's an epic. I love epics, no matter <laughs> what they are. I love epics, and uh, okay, an epic about the porn industry in the 70s. Okay, I didn't know anything about Paul Thomas Anderson. I didn't know his style, but everybody's talking about it. I said, I'm going to go see Boogie Nights, <laughs> and I was just blown away by this guy and his... Uh, chutzpah and confidence one to do that opening <laughs> shot for his second film two to even just attempt to do something that is big in scope for his you know, second film and to get away with everything that he did that i was like oh my god i can't wait for his next film and as soon as magnolia was announced um you you know, i saw magnolia and i was like this guy is the the real fucking deal we haven't had any we haven't had anybody or tarantino or even darren aronofsky where are these guys now? I mean, their stuff is going I, I, to I, I, their stuff is going to Netflix and Hulu. Yeah. So I can think mm -hmm. of one guy, one guy and only one guy, and you guys are all going to make fun of him. 
His name is Lee One L. Does anybody know Lee One L? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. So okay, yeah. Upgrade. Yeah. Upgrade. There you go. Upgrade. Do you know what he's doing right now? Anybody know? Hmm. He's no. remaking Escape from New York. He's rebooting Escape from New York mm. with John Carpenter's blessing. Oh, okay. but like why? <laughs> well, of course, it's John Carpenter's blessing. He gets a nice fat check. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. yeah he loves getting. He loves remakes. Yeah, yeah, please, yeah, dude. Well, yeah, see, please I love John Sorry, Carpenter. Man. That's like sacred territory for me right there. Me, me, oh, dude, you know, I, I love that. But that's my point is we don't, we, we haven't seen a, a new John Carpenter. We haven't seen, um, oh God, I can think of some other guys. Oh, I mentioned Risky Business earlier. The, yeah. the guy who did Risky Business came back 10 years later and did Men Don't Leave. Yeah. Which that, is a, a, a fantastically heartbreaking film. Very good movie. And yeah. yeah, really, really great movie. And he got performances out of actors and i'm like i didn't even know that guy had that range my god yeah. um yeah just just wonderful performances and and i really feel like we're missing something there you know something i brought up to marianne to uh, to both of your points um i the last several years and maybe it's me i don't know probably since now, don't get me wrong. I think it's a good film, but probably since Slumdog Millionaire won at the Oscars, I haven't been like excited for the top nominees. I really haven't since mm -hmm. I think the last time I was excited was at the uh, was when No Country for Old Men won. But that even was a year. Yeah. yeah, that and There Will Be Blood. And, yeah, yeah. But, it felt like yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's it's like uh, you know uh, you. Aaron, uh, you, um, you and I have chatted about how back in the day, in the 90s, you know, uh, summertime came. That's when you saw all these sequels and uh, and um, yeah. action films. Uh, yeah, all the action. Films. Independent. You, you, you have the summer of fun. Yeah. And, then, and then like one time was the time to watch real movies. Serious. You right. might get like the Lord of the Rings as those kind of started coming out. But as a yeah. whole, like that was when you watched real movies and like family movies. To get back on topic with, with Brad Pitt and producing, do you ever wonder if as a producer, somebody just reads the news and spits out a story? Do you guys remember um, Robert Altman when he did The Player? Yeah. And there's that, there's the one guy played by Peter Gallagher who says, somebody open the paper. Yeah. And just read me something. <laughs> uh, a plane crashed and 12 people died and the rest survived by eating the bodies of the dead. Sounds like a John Borman film. Let's get him on. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. He's literally just pulling stories out of the news and spinning a movie. And That's where the Wes Craven's ideas came from, is he just would read the newspaper and magazines and go, well, this sounds kind of creepy. Or, or Wes Craven. <laughs> Wes Craven would yeah. do that. Last House on the well, Left. Yeah. Read that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And he was like, yeah. that's, a, that's a really wacky idea for a horror movie i'm gonna make it a horror yeah. movie. okay like do these producers now uh the the other one the other one that i'm really fascinated by is um uh, i don't i always get her name wrong it's it's ellison's daughter megan so there's yeah megan megan yes yes her yeah. so she's got dad's money right because dad's the owner of oracle worth like four or five billion dollars or whatever yeah. and and he's totally fine giving her money so that she goes and produces movies but the movies she's produced, it, it's almost like I want to take real stuff. I want to take real. Uh, 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 she was a producer on Spotlight, I think, um, yeah. and a couple more that I'll think of if I look at. It. Well, Brian's got IMDb up; he can look it up. Um, <laughs> but she's another one that fascinates me because, again, it's like I've got money, I've got the people to do this. I want to tell interesting stories. And it's almost like I don't care who shows up at the yeah. theater. Yeah. Right do a few counterpoints to the whole um, American director thing because um, I cheated I looked on Wikipedia and I found a couple names I think we can we could maybe discuss or not uh, Jordan Peele Greta Gerwig okay. and J Damien Chazelle Damien Chazelle is one I like I know everybody thinks you know, La La Land is overrated uh, I like the idea of it but I really love First Man I really love First Man uh, and Whiplash I like Whiplash oh Whiplash Whiplash yeah. too yep that one as yep. well. Um, I, um, he's one. There was somebody else I just thought of a couple of days ago, and now I forgot who the hell. Uh, Another guy one. I like. You know, well, I mean, he's a good one to talk. To. Yeah. Is I like Taylor Sheridan a lot. He's mostly known as a writer. Yeah. But I like yes. his stuff. 
you know, he wrote Sicario and Hell or High Water, and then he directed mm -hmm. whatever. Yeah, Hell or High Water. Right, 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 right. Yeah, yeah. good one. Yeah. Good one. Oh, Denis. Uh, Denis. I like him a lot. Mm -hmm. Don't make me say his last name because I'll fuck it up. B Villeneuve, right? Is no, Villeneuve no. the same name? Well, somebody will tell him. You know, the French guy. We'll call him the French guy. We'll make like. Yeah, yeah you, you um, said when yeah, we get a James Cameron. Cameron. He's a James Cameron. He's Canadian. So, you know, he's <laughs> making yeah. sci fi. There you go. <laughs> There we go. Okay, so if you guys, if, if, those are very good shout outs. Uh, Jordan Peel, so what, what do you say? You said Peel? Yes, Peel. Uh, Peel. Um, Greta Gerwig. Gerwig, yes. Yep. Gerwig's a very good one as well. Um, oh, Coppola, shit. I didn't even think about Sophia. Yeah, well, yeah Sophia. Yeah. You know. well, does that count though, since, you know, she's Francis's daughter? Like, not, not to discount her as a filmmaker, right. but it's not like she's made it she on her own on, you know yeah. like she got a chance because of who her dad is and she happens to be talented i mean true true yeah. but don't forget she took a hell of a beating on godfather part you know three yeah so I, yeah i'm yeah. sure and and plus she co-wrote what a lot of people consider the weakest part of of new york stories with life without zoe she mm -hmm. that, that it's based on her story so yeah, she, I mean, she was like 17 then i mean no one's gonna you know true true but uh but you know, um, virgin suicides. I mean, p people could have laughed at that, then, but I loved it. And then a lot of people were down on Marie An um, Antoinette. It was like only Roger Ebert who gave it four stars. Um, and he praised it and he he, he booed uh, the booers at the Cannes Film Festival. So, mm -hmm. um, and she's got a different he also style, gave 10 to midnight, zero stars. So, you know, I'm sorry, what. <laughs> He also gave 10 to midnight zero stars. So I don't know if I can trust Roger Ebert very that, much. That's true. That's true. Well, um, yeah, and he didn't like he didn't like Full Metal Jacket. Yeah, just, just to no, show you a little bit. You said your piece on Nomadland. I think that's what you've been waiting for. Yeah, for, I just want to talk week. about that. Okay, I, I was going to go see it, and now you just put me off it. So, <laughs> so no, like you should see it. Here's the thing. I I watched it. I was like, all right, that was good, but that was it. Any yeah. of the other like. And I said this mainly for like the best actress nomination, for example, the four other films, I thought they were amazing. Like the Billie Holiday movie, it's not a great movie, but she was fucking amazing. Yes. yes. You know, like Promising Young Woman, like yeah, Love it. I watched it like tw two times within like three days. Like I loved it. Like mm -hmm. Carrie Mulligan's great. But like, you know, my, my thing is again, Frances McDormand, great actress. Um, did she really need a third one for I, I this? I didn't think she needed to. I, you had like these. No, like every other actress was just amazing, and she was just all right. Ma Rainey, so, like yeah, so I was. I, hoping, was, I was, thought Viola um, um, was going to get it. She was, she was amazing as Ma Rainey. She had her down. So, so well, let let her let her say this. Oh, I'm if, sorry. If you're, well, if you're the Academy, who gets it? If you're if you're the chooser, who do you say you was the best on? out of those five? I mean, I probably would have given it to Viola Davis. Okay. Like, Over Carrie? Yeah. 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 I mean, because I love Promising Young Woman. She's great. But, like, you, you know, watching Ma Rainey, like, I mean, she was just, give me my Coke. Like, I don't, like, you know, <laughs> I'm watching it. I'm like, holy shit. Like, I'm not watching, like, Viola Davis acting. I'm watching Ma Rainey on screen. Yeah. And that's how I felt. I, I mentioned this with, um... Jared Leto in uh, Dallas Buyers Club. Yeah, yeah. You know, a lot of times you're watching like you, these big, you know, actors and actresses, and, and you're like, oh, they're doing a great job acting. But like, you know, for example, like Jared Leto in Dallas Buyers Club, I'm like, holy shit! Like, it's I'm not watching Jared Leto. I'm watching this person. Yeah. Like, embody a yeah. truly embody. Yeah. Like so a that's character. how I felt with that. Yeah. But yeah. Didn't feel that. I, I, I always do. Yeah, I joke. In nomad land. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say, I always joke the same about Christian Bale. Christian Bale, to me, yeah. has become about 10 different actors. Because I oh, yeah. 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 over and over and over again. And I have to keep reminding myself, oh, yeah, that's not, you know, that's not uh, uh, Cheney. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's him. Yeah. Oh, he's got yeah. how much weight. Just, oh, it yeah. blows my mind. But no, I, I totally agree with you. I would have given it to Viola. And mm -hmm. I would have given it to her because I felt that that performance made me uh, made me think more about the character than the actress playing the character. Yeah. Whereas watching Nomadland, I'm watching Frances McDormand be born. 
And I feel like Ma Rainey, like if you want to see like a full biopic on Ma Rainey with her as the character, yeah, like that would be good. Yeah, Yeah, that would be good. Okay, cool. I I appreciate that. Thank you. I wanted to make sure they they got their two cents in it. Yeah, (laughs) for me, you know, No Man Land, much like all my trips through Blythe, I won't remember (laughs) in five years, but Psycho (laughs) Gorman. It's forever. I'm buying that. I'm buying Psycho Gorman. I got to see it. Dude, that. it's so good. Harrison will love it. So Sam and Aaron had to leave. Uh, oh. So what, what, uh, what was next topic on the agenda? Are we still sticking to that? or? I don't uh, well, I skipped one. Well, I didn't really skip. I mean, I had Best Animated Feature, but I know, Brian, your friend. Uh, was yeah, Kitty was going to talk one. about that. because so I, I mean, skipped that. Was, yeah, I mean, she was going to want to talk about it. So. She is a <laughs> Disney person but she is really pissed and and rightfully so that the academy every year and her being a disney aficionado every year with the exception of the year spirited away one and in recent years when spider-man into the spider-verse won but Mm -hmm. every year it's either a disney pixar or a disney film and i'm kind of pissed about that too and she's like they give no love to anime and and be a separate category that i mean i guess that would be an interesting question right should we should we say animated versus anime or? Um, I don't think so. I, I don't yeah, think so because I don't differentiate. Yeah, yeah I, don't I don't either. Um, between the two. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. But, but I don't think you should, no. But I mean, there, there, there's an argument to be made of if I, if, uh, uh, what did Harry Hazen do? Stop motion? Yeah, he did. Right? For his effects? Yeah. There, there is that thing of the movie that, is more real and more heartfelt in cartoon slash animated form than it ever could be in real life with real characters and real sets, yeah. uh, even with CGI factored in. So I always do wonder if there's some sort of middle layer there where we say, yes, these are animated films, but like there's another strata to that, right? Yeah. Like, again, I don't know if it's anime, I don't know if it's I don't know what that title would be, but right. I do feel like there could be an extra layer there. I mean, it, it, but even some of the ones that are nominated, I mean, I remember the year, I think uh, Coraline? Coraline, yeah. I thought yeah. was the best film that was nominated, and I, I forgot what film actually won, and then Hounds of Baskerville. Yes. That's a, yes. a French one, and it's funny. Animation is very clever, and I think that was the year they gave it to Finding Nemo or something. I don't know. Don't get me wrong; I love the Pixar films, but sure. it's almost like there's a bias there. Yeah. Like every year, it's like um, it's every year it's either Disney or Disney Pixar. Uh, the year Frozen one, I kind of well, one. Yeah, I, w- I would say one thing to keep in mind is that the Pixar people are very story driven. Yeah, they don't. They don't mess. The, the, you know, they 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 have good writers. They have good creative content people. Yeah. Um. The the movie Up, for yeah. example, that was actually nominated for Best Picture as well. And I do think animation should be nominated for Best Picture. Yeah. You know, it, it, there, there's a local DJ here, uh, uh, Holmberg, who talks about the the first ten minutes of Up being yeah. silent, and mm-hmm. he talks about cartoon miscarriage. And he says, you find me a better movie that explains miscarriage without ever saying a word. Yeah. Like, find me something, anything. He's like, this, this should be like videos we use in classrooms to yeah. explain them. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's like, think about how, and it's silent. There's yeah. no speaking. None. And you know what? I always and get teary eyed. So I always get teary eyed when he picks up his wife's scrapbook at the end where she's got the blank page there and it says, time for you to have your own adventure. And I'm like, oh my God. I'm getting goosebumps right now. Look at that. Everything. <laughs> no, I, I, I seriously, the, the dog shows up and says, hi there. And I start crying. Come on. Yeah. Everything about that movie is a tearjerker. Yeah. But, but my point to, to, to kind of hone back in on maybe what we're talking about it as we peel this away is, does the Academy still say animated um, is just a bunch of moving pictures and not a story, whereas Pixar is a story that just so happens to be drawn by computers. Do you know what I mean? Right. Like, I, I wonder if that's the mentality that's that's there, and that's where I'm saying maybe let's just make the Academy happy. Let's just say 
here's animated films that have a story and animated films that just have a bunch of images slapped together or whatever. Like, yeah. let's make you happy and give you this other category. Right. Um, but I would have said that if the other person was here and they're not. So if yeah. we want to move on, yeah, let's so... move on. What's, the, what's, the, what's, what's issue number four? Well, something I was going to say about the whole animated thing is, I mean, each branch is the one doing the nomination, right? So the actors branch is nominating the actors and then everybody votes in the end once the nominations come out. So is it a problem within the animation um, branch? Like who's in that branch and why are they good, only nominating Disney point. and Pixar movies? And, and that's, you know I don't think, I don't think there is a problem. I think Daniel's where I'm going to go with this. I don't think there's a problem in the animation branch. There used to be a problem though in the documentary branch. Yeah. There we oh, go. Yeah. That's yeah. a topic. Well, That's yeah. a like like long form documentary versus short form. Right. Like, um, um feature Wormwood. documentary. Hmm? Well, like Wormwood. Wormwood is the documentary that's on Netflix that Errol Morris did about LSD and the CIA in the fifties. Yeah. But it's a five part documentary, so it's right. not a movie, right? But it's definitely a documentary right. and a long form documentary. Yeah. There's there's absolutely something to that. Yeah. I mean. Um, it's, it's, I mean, the, the whole controversy that happened when Hoop Dreams was not nominated. It, it, was, it, was, it was the nomination process. However, yeah. everybody had to apologize to the person who won because they were criticizing her. And once they saw her film, they were like, um, the film that actually won was Maya Lin, A Strong, uh, A Clear Vision. And honestly, that's a really good documentary. I didn't know a damn thing about uh, Maya Lin after I saw it. I knew that she designed the wall in DC, right. but I didn't know the hardships that she went through and the racism that she went yeah. through being an Asian American designing the Vietnam uh, the Vietnam Memorial. So, so once I saw it, I, I'm sorry? Uh, what, during Hoop Dreams, wasn't it Spike Lee who came out and was like really sort of mad that Hoop he, Dreams wasn't nominated? He was, and all the critics, you know, Siskel and Ebert took the Academy to yeah. task because um, yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. that was their number one film of the year, Hoop Dreams, and like Pulp Fiction was. was like number two, and Forrest yes. Gump was number, okay. number okay. three, and the oh, year, cool. and also they they went off on the Academy for not nominating, uh, you know, your guy Earl Morris, um, the Thin Blue, the Blue Line. So the Academy awarded for best um, documentary to feature one of my top ten favorite films, Woodstock. I'm still shocked yeah. that that Woodstock won the Oscar, the 1970 Oscar for Best Documentary Feature. Still shocked. <laughs> and, and then Hearts and Minds, the Vietnam documentary. So sometimes they get it right, two by Barbara Koppel, especially Harlan County, USA. But there was the documentary, uh, to bring it back, it was the documentary uh, category that could, at the time, could have anybody be who was a, a member of the Academy vote in the... Uh, uh, you could be a janitor at the studio and mm -hmm. you're a member of the Academy and you can't vote in any of the other categories, but you could be for best documentary. And a lot of times they wouldn't even watch, a lot of times just the nominating process, they wouldn't even watch the documentaries. They would get a list of, you know, synopsis of what each one was about. And they were like, oh, okay, this one, oh, this looks good. This one, this and one, this one, this one. It, this wasn't one. It you said that they should have so something between the People's Choice Awards and the Oscars, yeah, like, like like regular like like basically the cinephile awards, yeah, where we geeks get together and we all say, okay, like like uh, what Sam was just saying a second ago, yeah, hey Francis McDormand, we love you. Guess what? Viola blew you out of the water, yeah, <laughs> and and you know, we don't mean it bad. Just Viola was better, and if it's up to us, we give it to her. Yeah, and I always that would that would be a more realistic thing. Yeah, you know. Like, like, and you know, we're, we're going to pick a hundred cinephiles across the country. We're going to have Elvis Mitchell host it, right? Yeah. What's he doing? Is he teaching or something? Mitchell? I forget. Yeah, I'll he's teaching, but I think he was uh, doing Oscar interviews uh, as well. I thought so. He was doing something. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you, you get my point is because I, I really feel like, and, and, to, and to Mary's point, it would get us to say, oh, yeah, Jordan Peele makes good movies. Oh, yeah. Hartzell makes good movies. Oh yeah, Greta Gerwig makes good movies. Yes. Well, yeah, you, we should watch the next one of those when it comes out. Well, you know what the Oscars wanted to do, and I thought this was very condescending. They wanted to put a best popular film award well, a couple oh, of years yeah. ago. Oh, um, yeah. I mean, and I thought that was stupid. If it's a good film, it's a good film. Honestly, the year 
the year the slum dog the year slum dog won my film of the year was the dark knight i was like yeah. okay it's a comic book film okay but look you got a great story everybody gives a hell of a good performance in it every it's not just christian bale everybody's got their moment to shine in the film the action yeah. is great you care about the characters the cinematography is great yeah. i mean one for best visual effects i'm like what visual effects almost everything was a practical effect in the damn thing um <laughs> and so it's like no we're not going to nominate it to get back to this whole topic of animated right yeah well <laughs> almost every major production any any movie that's more than a hundred million dollars to, to make is going to be in some way, shape, or form based on uh, IP. Right? Yeah. There is no there is no uh, original movie that's going to cost a hundred million dollars. Uh, Promising young woman. I think uh, the uh, uh, Sam did you, you mention that? Didn't Mary mention that? Um, uh, uh, Sam, Sam mentioned it. I, I yeah, seconded that it. it was really good. Right. <laughs> he mentioned it. Uh, but, but yeah, but I mean, like all of those more independent type films uh none of them are going to hit the hundred million dollar mark for production costs none right. of them are going to have massive cgi books and all the rest. Uh, so yeah I, I really do sort of feel like maybe the academy needs to have a better mindset although you know it's funny brian you mentioned the popular movie thing yeah but didn't the next year they went from five pictures to ten pictures for best picture yeah yep. ten pictures like that was their, that was their like hey we'll, we'll play the edges right so yeah. we'll say that uh, Avengers Endgame could be nominated for Best Picture. Yeah. Wink, nudge, nudge. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, but, but yeah, uh, it, it's interesting that you say Best Popular Film. Right? You know, it, it's like 10 years ago, would that have been one of the Pirates of the Caribbean movies? Because yeah. all the teenagers saw it. You would not want to be with Dan and I when we saw Troy. I, I, <laughs> I, 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 I don't even remember the fucking movie, honestly. One of the best scenes in that movie is where, uh, so uh, ha Achilles kills Hector. Yeah. And he goes back to his camp by the sea. The king of Troy, the father of Hector, sneaks out to see Achilles. The mm. father is played by Peter O'Toole, okay. tremendous British yeah. actor, right? Right, right. Mm -hmm. And he walks up to Brad Pitt, grabs his hands, kneels down and kisses his hands. And he says, I have just kissed the hands of the man who murdered my son. And if you watch that scene, you can almost see Brad Pitt like, holy fucking shit, this is Peter O'Toole. This is one of the <laughs> greatest actors of all time, dressing me down. And like, I almost feel like, like we were talking about Brad Pitt as a producer, you could hear the click in Brad's brain going, I gotta make movies so I can repeat this scene over and over and over and over and over. Again. <laughs> right? I, I there's this this is this is the best I'm ever gonna do is that. I'm having yeah. Peter O'Toole tell me that I just killed this kid. You know what I mean? And make yeah. me feel like I'm this freaking tall. Yeah. Right. And it's just I, and, and it's funny because I always wonder, is that scene constantly replaying on a loop in Brad Pitt's head? And he's saying to himself. I'm going to remake that scene a million times over, but it's going to be with different actors every time, and it's going to be with a yeah. different scenario every time. But I'm going to have two really great actors in a room talking about something that's very hard to talk about. And in almost every movie that you've discussed that you produced, there's at least one scene in each of those movies where two actors are in a room discussing something difficult. In Moonlight, when he comes out, in, in uh, the big short, when, when he's talking to the stripper, and realizing how bad the housing crisis really is. Yeah. Um, in Moneyball, when he has the discussion with David Justice mm -hmm. and tells him, right, hey, I'm not paying your salary. The Yankees are paying half your salary, buddy. And then Justice becomes like a, a standard bearer for the team and they go on and win 20 games and all that other stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So in every single one of those movies, there's a scene that replicates that Troy scene. Mm -hmm. And I, I really feel that. like, right? I mean, if you think about it, like, yeah, I never yeah, you know, that. and if Brad Pitt looks back on Troy and goes, yeah, that film was a complete piece of shit, but that scene <laughs> between me and Peter O'Toole, let me tell you something. And then he has a couple of great scenes with him and Brian Cox. Yeah. Cox is Agamemnon, the, the, the leader of the king of the warring tribes. Yeah. And you can almost, you can almost feel Brad Pitt saying, I get to tell off Brian Cox. Oh yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> right. I get to tell him, you know, because I, I, this is my joke with Brian. Brian Cox was the original Hannibal Lecter. 
if the, you didn't know that. That's right, in Manhunter. Uh-huh. Well, probably Manhunter, probably. baby. <laughs> Love it. Yeah. That's, there's another one you should see. The original yes. Hannibal Lecter movie. It's Michael Mann's Manhunter from 1986. Brilliant film. Yep. Uh, 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 is it Peterson? Do I, I never get that guy's name right. Uh, William Peterson, yep. yep. Yeah, he, he plays the FBI profiler yep. uh, that Ed Norton winds up playing again in Red Dragon. So, right. Anyway, right. Um, what is our next topic? Oh, well, did, actually, we, did we go to it? Did we? I think we did. Um, it's approaching three, so... Um, do we want to stop talking? I know we've been on for a while. Well, yeah, we've been. Uh, I mean, Marianne is going to have to give me time. I'm sorry, Marianne. I think this is long, but you know what? This has been a lot of fun. Okay, so first off, five films that Marianne's got to see. I'll start with my five off the cuff. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay, so since we were talking about documentaries, um, Harlan County, USA. All right, that's not bad. That's a good. One. Okay. Um, it's not Michael Moore type things. It's Barbara Koppel, the Cinema Verite. But the interesting thing about it is in this um, coal miner strike in Harlan County, where the big corporation has what's called the you know, uh, gun thugs going after the, the strikers, they go after her and the camera people too, which is very right. interesting. Towards oh, the okay. Um, okay, so that. Um, uh, just Cinema Paradiso, have you seen that? Mm-mm. Cinema Paradiso. Just came out on 4K Dolby Vision from Arrow. Perfect. Beautiful, beautiful transfer. Um, drip, 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 drip down my face. Ooh. If you're a lover of cinema, the moment when the old projectionist turns to the kid, people outside are, they want to get in to watch the movie in this town. And mm-hmm. when he turns to him and says, in Italian, of course, but he says, uh, do you want to see some magic? abracadabra and he puts a mirror up to the projector goes on the wall and he projects the film on the entire town Ooh, oh, wow goosebumps goosebumps goosebumps, <laughs> goosebumps, no, goosebumps. That, no it's, it's a great scene this is That's abracadabra really oh my god i'm just like there it is there it is mm-hmm. um okay we have two right the two county oh, cinema Par- stop looking at your movie collection cinema Paradiso, okay um, she hasn't seen any Robert Altman, so let's give her a Robert Altman. Have I told you to watch um, um, McCabe and Mrs. Miller yet? Yes, I think yes. I did. Yes. Um, give her MASH instead. She, she yeah. might, I, you, original, you might actually, yeah. yeah, it's not like the television show. The original film of MASH starring Donald Sutherland and Elliot Gould. So MASH. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Suicide is painless. <laughs> it brings on many changes. No, but, no, but it's, it's funny because... Because the movie came out and the TV show wasn't even a thought. Right. But so many people responded to that movie that CBS finally said, you know what? Maybe it's worth making a TV show out of this. Yeah. And then that became the most famous TV show of all time up until what? Seinfeld, maybe? I don't yeah. remember. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but that's a good one. Yeah. All right. So uh, Harlan County, Cinema Paradiso, MASH, okay. two more. Um, for, let's do a concert film. Okay. A hippie trippy concert film. Uh, and this could also be a fictional film, too. Led Zeppelin, the song remains the same. Nice. Ooh, good one. Get Ooh, the marijuana out for that one. Because not only that, they had to include fantasy sequences during the musical yes. numbers. Oh. Actually, John oh, Bonham's is the only one who's who doesn't oh, do a pretentious fantasy sequence. John Bonham, their drummer, his biggest heartbreak and why he was such a madman on the road was because oh, he God, wanted to yeah. stay he wanted to stay at home with his wife and kid and work on houses and work on his farm. So what's his fantasy sequence? Being at home with his wife and kid, working on the farm, rehabbing houses, driving his race cars. That's his fantasy. While Robert Plant envisions himself as a Viking and <laughs> Jimmy Page goes up on the mountain that's in the ins- you, you got to hear some Led Zeppelin. Um, in the inside cover of the fourth album, he, he meets the hermit there and all that stuff. So Zeppelin well, song. Knows, she knows the immigrant song because the immigrant song was in the Thor. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh, oh, come to the land of the ice and snow with the men. So, I'm sure she's so, heard their way to heaven too. Well, just, I, you know, I know Robert that's Plain, a, My mom really likes Led Zeppelin. So. Yeah, Robert Plant dreams of being a Viking. Gee, I wonder where that came from. You know what yeah. I mean? like, <laughs> Yeah, and, uh, the fifth movie, how many Spike Lee have you seen? Oh, how many Scorsese have you seen? 
not on that. <laughs> Let's give you a non Scorsese Scorsese film if you know what I mean. Okay, After Hours. Ooh, God, you suck. I was going to go with another one, but that's a good one. <laughs> All right. Okay. And Dan, your picks. <laughs> so I already gave you Risky Business. Yep. And I'll I did write that, that down, one. actually. Um, you got me thinking about musicals. I, I, um, I was thinking about musicals in the last 20 years. Uh huh. The one that I think was the best was Chicago's music. So if you have not seen, I have. Movie, you have. You have seen that? I've seen Chicago, yes. Okay, so I'll cross that off. Um, you want musicals, right? I'm going to have to come back to that one because, like, I'm, I'm, I would tell you if you haven't seen it, um, it, it sucks because it's on, I think, HBO, but it's David Burns performance. Oh, uh, Spike Lee directed it. Uh, um, American Utopia. American oh, Utopia. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Very, Have you seen good. Very good. I don't think she's seen it. Watch that because okay. it, it's, it, it is a Spike Lee filming of a performance of David Byrne's band. But right. in the, the songs, David's talking to the audience and he's talking to you. And yeah. it's really interesting how he talks about where he came up with songs, where he came up with the ideas. I was very, very impressed with that. So there, there's the music. Yeah. And, Spike okay. Lee's, um, and Spike Lee's direction in it. He said that when he saw the yeah. performance live, he immediately said, since they do all these, uh, it's choreographed and they do all these movements across stage, he immediately said, Busby Berkeley, overhead moving camera. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, but, but, okay. but there's more than that. You remember the lights, right? Yeah, the the, the dots that they have on their shoulders. Yeah. So they had these little tracking things right here, Mary. So as they moved, the lights moved with them. Yeah. The lights tracked them. Okay. And yeah. then they had cameras lined up next to the lights, and so you could literally see each person they were moving. Yeah. It's very, very, very well done. So yeah, that's the second one. Yeah. Um, okay. Let's see here. I, I mentioned him earlier. I don't know if you've seen it. John Carpenter's Starman from the I have not. Oh, great Starman. film. Great film. Do you know what I was doing, Brian? Hmm. I, 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 I got obsessed with it for three days straight. I just kept watching the last two minutes. Oh, God, yeah. What I'm talking about? Yeah. And I just kept watching it going, I don't know how he got that shot. I'm sure it's probably an incredibly simple shot, right? And, yep. and if I saw the making of, I would know how he did it. And for all I know, he stood on a ladder. You know what I mean? Yeah. But it's such a fantastic ending shot to that movie. Yeah. yeah so John Carpenter, Starman, that'd be the third one. Okay. Um, and and I'll, you know, I was thinking of I want to I want to address foreign films because I do think there's such a treasure trove of foreign films. Yes. International films now. Oh shut <laughs> up. <laughs> They're foreign to the U.S., buddy. Uh, <laughs> uh, I mentioned Infernal Affairs. Yes. I definitely feel like you should watch that one. I'm trying to think yep. of another one. I'm trying to think of like, um, I, you know, Brian mentioned Das Boot. I don't know if you've seen Das Boot. I have not. That's a good one. That's a really okay. good one. Light, life on cut a, well, it, but, it's, but it's life on a, a German submarine during World War II. Yes, II. yes. And it's from the Nazi perspective. But the thing is, it's from the soldier perspective, too. Yeah. And you see that these guys are really not in favor of Hitler. They got oh, yeah, a job to do. They're going to do their damn job. But they keep on, on poking fun at the uh, uh, clean cut Nazi who is aboard the yes. ship when they're eating. He's like yeah. and, beautifully and, shaved well, they, and everything. Yeah, all that. Uh -huh. Well, I was yeah. going to say, there, there's, there's sort of an odd historic precedent underneath all of that. Yeah. So when Hitler dies, when he commits suicide, somebody's got to run the Third Reich. Okay. Right. But really, it's more the point of somebody's got to surrender the Third Reich. Yeah. So the person they get to surrender the right is the commander of the Navy. The commander of the Navy used to be the commander of the submarines, and he okay. rose up through the ranks, right? Sure. And so while everybody was, like, killing themselves and, you know, running to Argentina, nobody was left to run the damn thing. So he just said, well, screw it. I'll be the guy who surrenders. So he's the guy that surrenders the right. Okay. And when he – there's an interesting story. When he surrenders, they're like, we're so glad it was you. Because you're a reasonable man and you understand we don't want to slay another million of you. We want this done, right? We want to yeah. we want to go home. And uh, it was very interesting. So so that's uh, I think am I up to four? Four? 
Yeah, unless you want to, I, I mean, I wrote down Infernal Affairs, so. Kind of I yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll kind of, I'll let you decide. I mean, I want to give you five because I, I, I want to think about fifth one. Um, and, I, you know, I, in my heart, I, I always, I've got a soft spot for independent direction. I always have, I always will. Sure. I always love the, I, the guy who's got a new idea and he's willing to push it. So I'm going to try this, see if you like it. Safety, not guaranteed. Okay. You know the movie. It's not a Colin Trevorrow movie? It, it, it is, I, I believe it's a Duplass production. The Duplass brothers? Uh, yes. Mark and, who's the other brother, Brian? Mark I've never heard other. of this, so now I'm-, okay, now so I'm I think so it's Colin Trevorrow because that's the movie he made that got um, Spielberg or whoever to hire him to do Jurassic World. It, okay, so it, maybe it was, I don't remember, but I know the Duplass brothers wrote it. Right, yeah, and, I think that's and, the case, yeah. The, if you've never seen their entire filmography, they, they did the movie where, um, uh, one of their first like independent hits was people go out on a camping trip and they're chased by a family that wears paper bags over their heads. Yeah. That was like, that was like one of their first independent films, but uh -huh. they don't, they don't like, it's not a slasher flick. Mm -hmm. They keep seeing this family with bags over their heads in the woods. as they're <laughs> Like what the hell's going on? And, but that was it. That was like the whole scary point of the movie. Yeah. Uh -huh. It was what, what was unknown versus what is known. Anyway. So Great. the Duplass brothers, they're, they're a little twisted, and I appreciate okay, yeah. humor. But yeah, safety not guaranteed. Brian, if you haven't seen it, see it. I'm going to now. I'm definitely yeah. going to now. <laughs> yeah, definitely worth it. And it's, um, so Mark Duplass and, I always get her name wrong, Audrey or Aubrey Plaza. Aubrey Plaza, yeah, with a B. Yeah. Yes. So yeah, there's your five. Okay. Cool. Okay, All so right. that ends, that ends this third edition well, which is going to be this is the, by the way this is probably airing a lot after the oscars but you know <laughs> uh enjoy we ramble a bit so there you go uh this is the end of fireside Ooh. cinema i'm brian i'm marianne um i'm some guy <laughs> daniel w kingsley that's hilarious that's just funny as hell. <laughs> on behalf of sam and aaron thank you for listening yes yeah, thank, thank you, you. Thanks for everybody. All right.